Now I'm going to quote Yaku here and say, Google Drive is the heartbeat of the G Suite platform. Everything runs from there. So if you send an email and you use attachments, if you share folders with colleagues and friends and whoever else, everything is run from the Google Drive. And it's all about sharing and collaboration. That's the main focal point there. So we have in this year, in the COVID year, or as I like to call it, COVID year, um, we have created a lot of digital resources and it's stuff that we should be able to share without having to download stuff and upload things and we can share it with our colleagues and our friends and collaborate and work together and not be so isolated in our jobs. Um, right, sorry, I have notes next to me so if I say um, it's just me looking to the side. <laughs> so Google is a, a cloud-based platform, the, the Google Drive. And cloud storage, I know it freaks my boyfriend out when I say cloud storage because he thinks, oh, I'm going to lose my information or this or that, or someone is going to hack it. No one's going to hack it if you have a very good password. So please make sure that you have a solid password and not password one, two, three, four. That is not a solid password. When you have uh, your account, your, your Google account, you can access your information from any device. So in front of me at the moment, I have my laptop, I have a tablet, and I have my phone, and they're all connected and they're all synced. And I'm sure we've all had that moment in life where you have either misplaced your flash disk or your laptop was stolen or your iPad exploded or whatever the case. And when you have your data on the cloud, on Google Drive, you can always recover it. I've lost so many photos and videos personally, and now that I'm using Drive um, as well as iCloud, I'm actually, I just, I feel at peace. Okay, so today, please become active in the presentation. So you're gonna use what you've learned in module one, and you're gonna open a new tab. So if you, for some reason, <laughs> I think someone is sharing something here. Um, if you, for some reason, close the Meet tab, don't worry, you can just rejoin. But open a new tab, remember it's Control T, and then we're gonna learn how to navigate to Drive and then go from there. So be interactive, um, play around in your Drive. I'm sure you've populated your Drive with something some files, some forms, some folders, and we're just going to play around with it. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to present now. Let me just find the right thing. Okay. Just let me know if, when you see my screen, please, Jason, so I know. I can't see your screen, Andrew. Fantastic. Thanks, Yaku. So with Google Drive, uh, with a normal account, a personal account, you get about 15 gigabytes of uh, storage, which is not a lot. Uh, you get flash drives with more than that, actually. But if you have the G Suite for Education, which is free for schools, so I highly recommend that you get your school involved with the G Suite, it's unlimited. That's right, I sound like a selling person, I'll sales person. It is unlimited. I'm using about, I think, 550 gigs on my uh, school account because I'm a drama teacher and we have to upload all of our practical videos, all of our students' practical work in video format. So that's taking up so much space. And now I don't have to worry about uh, deleting files and keeping things, uh, keeping the storage um, empty. I can just put everything on there. Okay, so now you see my screen. I'm going to open a new tab so you can just see what I'm doing. I'm just going to go to this one. All right, so you can open a new tab by pressing that one, that plus sign or you can just hit control T. If you're on a Mac, it's command T. So there you go. Okay, now how do we get to drive? Google Drive, you can either go to the Waffle, 
it's that little thing there. And as Yasku pointed out in our training, for some reason, people Google this and then you get that. That is not the waffle we're looking for today, maybe for this weekend, but not today. So the waffle we're referring to is that one. Click on it, uh, that thing, click on it. And that is a collection of all the Google apps. And there is my drive. So you can scroll through these apps, just have a look what's in there. It's always surprising that people, they're surprised to see YouTube there, but it is a Google product as well. And then you can, you, you can move around these apps so it's easier for you to find. So my classroom is right at the top, but if you have a personal Google account, class will, classroom won't be there. It's only available on the G Suite. So you can move it around. My drive is quite high up there. And then you can just click on drive. And there we go. The other option is to, again, open a new tab. And I can just type in drive.google.com. And it will take me to my drive. But what the cool thing here is, if you hit spacebar, it will automatically search within your drive. So I can now go and look for, I'm an Afrikaans, well, I teach at Afrikaans school, but also my staff is in Afrikaans. Please excuse me, I can go for 12. Grad 12. And it will look within my drive for all the files and folders that are titled Grad 12. There we go. So everything that has Grad 12 in it is right there. So I know some people prefer to also bookmark drive. I've bookmarked it there before. That was covered in module one, how to bookmark um, different tabs and sites. So if I click there, it will also just go to my drive. There we go. Okay. Now, just um, a quick little note here. I'm just gonna open another tab to show this. You have to, um, search option options. So you have this top bar here, the URL bar, and then you have this bar here. Now, yes, you can search in both, but this one at the bottom, it seems to be a bit clumsy with certain things. So using the URL bar is definitely more efficient, uh, I find, because if you're in a tab and I'm in this tab here and I want to search something, now oh, I have to browse to a new tab and then click and type in there. It's very clumsy. So you can just type in there at the top and find whatever you're looking for. Another tip, I think we might have mentioned it in module one, I'm not quite sure, is try and upload a profile pic for yourself, a nice professional profile pic. Uh, it just it helps to navigate between multiple accounts if you have multiple accounts and it also personalizes it. And the way to do that is you, okay, there I'm signed into Chrome. So if you go to the one here at the bottom, it's very easy. You just click on this little camera and then you can upload. And I'm sure you'll be able to take a selfie from your computer as well, which I'm not gonna do right now. Fantastic. So that we've covered the, the first part. Now we're gonna move on to um, uploading to Drive. So in order to populate your Drive, you need files and folders and all sorts of things. So I, like, I prefer using Microsoft Word because the formatting for me is just easier, but you can obviously use Google Docs and all of those apps which we will get to in module three and module four. But you want to populate your drive with all the files, even though it's, if it could be Microsoft uh, Office uh, files or it could be the G Suite app files. So these are all my folders uh, with uh, the files in them. Now let me just show you how to upload something. I'm gonna go to this one, training. There are a few ways to upload. Uh, one of the most, one of the simplest ways, I'm just going to minimize this so I can drag and drop, is there's a folder that I've created on my computer itself, on my machine, and I can just drag it and drop it. It's easy as that. 
So there it's uploading there at the bottom. And with this upload, the file structure will remain the same. So I've uploaded a complete folder with multiple files in it. Let me just find it now. There's the example folder. I'll open it. And there we have all the files that I have, that I created on my machine. All the files with the subfolders. So when you upload by doing that, it will, it will keep the file structure as is. So sometimes it's easier for you to maybe use your machine to create these file structures. Um, I find it's easier for me on my Mac to do that and then just upload the folder as a whole. You can also do the individual files. Let me just show you that. So I've op opened the folder on my machine and then just drag and drop an individual file. There we go. I think it's gone into this folder now. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> okay. The other way to do it, let me just delete this so I can do it again. It's very easy. Right click and remove. Move to trash. Is you can right click on any of these, on your, any of the white space. So right click somewhere and then say either upload files or folder. I'm going to do the same again with the same folder. Upload folder and it goes to my machine, it's on the desktop, example folder, and I'm going to upload the whole thing. There we go, it's uploading. Uploading, uploading. Internet might be a bit slow. How are we doing on the chat there, Jason? Any questions? Fantastic. Uh, means I'm not no taking too questions much. Questions in the chat so far. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And the last way to, uh, to upload the last method is just click new. So here on the left side, click the colorful new plus sign, and it's exactly the same. File upload and folder upload. Easy peasy. Okay, so in my Google Drive, I'm just going to go to the main one, the root one. I just want to show you, like I said, I had to upload uh, a lot of learner evidence for, especially for matric moderation. And then it's so simple, instead of using a DVD drive or a memory stick or whatever it might be, I just uploaded it to my drive and I could share it with my uh, subject advisor. So you can upload any file, pictures, documents, videos. Let me just, um, there we go. All the learner evidence in video format. Ooh. And again, with unlimited space, it's so easy to do it and it's so convenient. So now the, we've done uploading. You can also download things from Drive should the need arise. So we'll go to training again. And let's see if I download this one. So you can click on example of the file that you want to download, right click, and then download. Boom. And it's going to convert to Word, and there the download goes. You can also download multiple files at the same time. So if I want to download these two, it will download, and it will download in a zip format, which means if I want to open it on my machine, I'm going to have to unzip it. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to explain some of it again. I want you to just try and upload something. Create a folder in your drive. So you're going to, okay, I'm just going to stop that. Click on new, create a new folder. Because again, the idea is to be a bit interactive and to get cracking on your own machine and see what drive does. So click new, create a folder. Let's say new folder 
for funsies. Create. And now I'm going to upload some files to this folder. So I can either right click and then go to upload files, upload folder. So I'm going to click upload files and then just go to, hmm, let's see, what can I upload? Bloom of Geluk and we're going to upload that one. I'm going to upload this picture over here and I'm also going to upload a Word doc. Let's hope it's not going to take five minutes. My internet, for some reason, is not playing along very nicely. There we go. Quick sticks. And then we have three different types of um, files that just uploaded. And you can access them as easy as that. The other way to do it, remember, is to drag and drop. I'll minimize my window. And I can just click, uh, click, don't do this, click, damn it. There we go. <laughs> just drop. Okay, so now it's a nice chaotic file. Maybe we'll get back to this one in a bit. On to our next, uh, next slide here. And this is now where it becomes quite fun, is how do you share? That's the point of it. So yes, you have the, the cloud-based uh, storage, but now you can share it with one person or multiple people, either within your domain or with your mother or whoever you want to share it with. So in order to to share effectively, efficiently, effectively, both of them, um, you need to create a sensible and a practical folder structure. It becomes very important in, uh, for manageability because if your drive looks like this, I'm going to use my own as an example here. Yes, nice folders here, everything. But if it starts looking like this down here, it becomes a bit chaotic. And with sharing, you need to just have your things organized so that when you have, when you um, think about the sharing, the sharing rights for every folder and what's within the folder, then it becomes important to, to have everything organized. So in tech, as in education, parents and children are a very hot topic. So in tech, we refer to parents and children uh, and children then inheriting the rights of the parents. So what on earth am I talking about? Let's look here. Admin. So this folder could be the parent folder. And everything within it becomes a child. So if I decide to share this folder with my mother, everything in it is also shared with my mother. So be aware of that when you put certain things in folders that it will become accessible to everyone you have shared that folder with. Now, before we get to the sharing rights, I just want to show you some navigation uh, tips, how to get to your fol folders and your files a bit more efficiently. So you can either look on the left-hand side here, that little triangle, and click on it. And there you see all the folders that I have and the subfolders within them. That might be a better example. There we go. There we go. And then you can just close it again when you're done with it. Or you can go to the top. Where am I now? Let me just show you training. I'm going to go to this one. So you can look at that as well. I'm in example folder main. If I go back one, I'm in training. And if I go back another one, I'm in my drive. So we have this navigation option and that navigation option. 
And then the last one, which is actually quite nifty because I didn't realize how powerful that is until the e-advisor showed us, is you can search within your drive up there, but you can set parameters by clicking on this little triangle to the right. So let's say I am looking for something that I created. I go to owner, the drop down, and I say it's owned by me because I know I created that specific file. But oh my word, I can't remember what on earth I called it. I remember it was a Google Slides. So maybe we can do that. And I remember I worked on it in the last seven days. So you can go to date modified and I say last seven days and then search. Yes, that is the title. Not a very creative title, but there it is. So this search option, I'm just going to uh, recap that. This search option is very powerful because your drive, if you have endless amounts of storage, your drive can have quite a lot of things in it. So again, you can go, oh, I know I created a word, a word doc, and it was, it's owned by me because I created it. And I created it yesterday. I know I worked on it yesterday. No, this one, yesterday. Search. Oh, I didn't work on it yesterday. Oh, my word. Let's try another one. So it is doc. It's owned by me. And I modified it in the last seven days. And there we go. It's a very easy navigation to find your stuff. Uh, and then the last thing is none of this will get deleted unless you delete it. And then Google deletes it after 30 days. It's a new thing. I've actually never seen that before. But it, I think they rolled it out within the last two weeks maybe. So then you can go into trash. So uh, I'm going to delete this. Again, you can say right click and remove. There it goes. Oh my goodness, I have just deleted something that I should not have deleted and I go to trash. And I will be able to find it right there. And then if you want to restore it to where you found it in the first place, again, right click, restore. And it will go back to where it was. Okay, now how to share. <clears throat> I'm going to my drive and I'm going to training. Jason, how are we doing there with the chat? Any questions? Anything I should clear up? Um, no, and there are no questions in the chat. I Great, think you've yes, explained science. perfectly. <laughs> Don't boost my ego too soon. <clears throat> okay, so with the sharing, Again, I'm quoting Yaku here. It can either go very right or it could go very wrong. So it's important to know how you share things and with whom you share it. So I want to now, I'm just going to delete this just to clear my brain. So remove, move to trash. Fantastic. I'm going to now open this folder that I've created for the session. It's just a bunch of example things with a little subfolder in it. And I want to share this doc. So if you right click on it, you will see an option that says share. I'll click on that. And now this Google doc, I can either share with an individual. So let's say I want to share it with Yaku. And I can now choose what he will be able to do with this doc. So in this little drop down, I can decide if he's an editor, a commenter, or a viewer. I want Yaku to be able to edit this file and pretty much do my work for me. So I'm going to leave it as an editor, or I can say, no, I've done the work. I want him to comment on, that, what, on the work that I've done but he's not able to change anything within the doc. So I can say commenter. 
Or I can say, he's just a viewer. He knows nothing of what I'm doing, but I just want him to read through everything that I've written and created. Right, so let's make him an editor. And then up here, with the little, what do you call that, a gear, thank you. Right, a gear. Click on it, and now I can even change the permissions even more. So I can unclick this and unclick that. Editors can change permissions and share. Now, I don't want Yahoo to add any other people to this doc. It's just between the two of us. So then I can unclick that. If I've chosen him as a viewer or a commenter, I can unclick this if I don't want him to be able to download, print, or copy the doc. Now, this is a very good option. Like, let's say Yaku is a student of mine. I'm just going to change this and say he's a viewer. He's a student of mine. I go to the gearbox, and I don't want my students to be able to download, print, or copy my notes or my whatever it might be. They will not be able to do it then. But you cannot change the functionality of the students or the person's machine. So they can still screenshot it or screen grab or print screen it or take a photo of it with their phone. But they won't be able to download, print, or copy from Google Drive. OK. So now Yaku is going to be an editor. He's very powerful and knowledgeable. And I want to let him know when this doc lands in his, uh, in his email account. So when he receives an, that he receives an email uh, notification saying, please have a look at this doc. And then I can send him a message as well. Hi, Yaku. See, I'm very polite. Hi, Yaku. Please have a look at this and let me know what you think. Boom. And then I can just press send, which I'm going to do because it's going to annoy him. You are sharing to Yaku van Nikar WCD info, which is not in the Google Workspace. Now, our Google Workspace is for Wurstelstan & Boss, which is the school that I teach at. And I will always get this message if I share outside of Wurstelstan & Bosch, outside the organization. And I say, yes, I trust him. Share anyway. Boom. Now you can go and make changes and everything to that doc. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let me just check my notes here. Give me a second. So I can do exactly the same with a folder. Actually, no, let's not do the folder first. I want to show you something else first. So what I've done now is I went to share. But I can also get link. So within that share option, remember I shared this with Yaku. But if I decided to share the link to that doc, it could go to multiple people at the same time. So I just click on this bottom one, and it will open up a little dialog box. And now I'm actually going to share this with you guys on the chat. So I say, OK, before I do that, let me just show you this. You have three options here. So either it's restricted, which is quite uh, counterproductive, because if I share something with you and it's restricted, you're not going to be able to see it. So I'm not quite sure why that option is there. Or I can just say anyone within Stunabosh High is able to look at it. So if someone else gets the link, they won't be able to open it. Only people with an email address that ends with at stallies.com can open it. But now I want you guys to be able to see it. And we don't have the same, we're not in the same domain. So I say anyone with the link. And I can again change the, the sharing rights here. So I can either say you guys can edit it or comment or just view. Now for this point, this exercise, I just want you to be able to view it. So I'm going to copy the link. It's telling me the link is copied. I'm going to go to this. Open the chat and paste. You should be able to click on that link and it will take you to a Google Doc which has, I think, nothing in it. <laughs> so it's not very interesting viewing, but it's just for the exercise. 
Now the same we can do with a complete folder. So I'm going to go back to training, to my folder, Google Fundamentals 2. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to share it. So again, just to recap, I can either share this with one person, two people, various people, or I can just get a link for it. So you can either get the link from here, and you can see anyone with a link is able to edit it, or I can go back, right click, and say get link. And it will open the same dialog box. So now I'm going to create some chaos, and I want you to have some fun with it. I am going to share this link, I'm going to copy it, and as you see, you are all editors, so you will all be able to play around in it and copy things in it and move things, and that's exactly what I want you to do. And I'm going to open that folder to show you what happens. So I'm going to copy the link, done, I'm going to go back to the chat, and paste this link, here you go. So open it up, and let's see what happens. <laughs> so this is the folder that I've shared now. I'm going to open it. And I want you to upload anything to this, just not sensitive information, please. Nothing that we can use to blackmail you. <coughs> Excuse me. You can put stuff in this folder, because remember, the, the sharing rights are inherited from the parent folder. And the parent folder in this scenario is the training folder. So I'm not seeing any activity yet. I would love to see some stuff being dragged into this. Jason, could you have a go at this as well? And let's see what happens. There we go. Thank you, Yaku. I'm going to, in fact, move this now into a new folder. I'm going to say, this stuff. I'm going to move that. How's everyone doing? Are you looking for things to upload? Jason, how's the chat looking? No questions in the chat, Andrew. I also uploaded a Google Doc document. Okay, let's see. There we go. We have a quotes doc from Talita. It's funny, I'm not seeing yours, Jason. Maybe it's just taking a moment. There we go. Fantastic. So this is how you use a folder, and then various people can contribute it. And you've probably noticed this option here on the side that says Shared Drives. If you're using a personal Gmail account, this option will not be there. This is just for uh, G Suite users the G Suite platform, and this is a topic for a different day. So we're not going to get into that today. It's a fantastic option, but we just don't have the, the, the time for that to delve into it. So we're just focusing on my drive. Seeing things moved. Fantastic. Um, Andrea, just to quickly Please. chip in regarding the shared drives, yeah. um, just one thing to, to keep in mind that with a Gmail account, you won't have the function to create a shared drive. However, um, someone who, who has a G Suite account can invite people with Gmail accounts to shared drives. So you might you can get added to a shared drive, you just don't have the option to actually create. So once oh, okay. you are added to a shared drive, the little shared drive icon will also appear there. Um, anything okay. that you might be added to. 
You are completely correct because I actually remember adding a friend of mine to a shared drive of mine. <laughs> okay, so it's not as chaotic as I wished it would be. Let's see. Okay, so now I want to track some activity. I want to see what went on in this folder. And in order to do that, I can just click on this I here on the top right corner. And I can see that I have shared this. Anyone on the internet with this link can edit. So it's going to show me what, what uh, sharing and editing rights I've given and to whom. If I added individuals to this folder, their profile pic will also be there. So I can see if I click on activity, I can see Vivian uploaded something there, Talita uploaded something, the Cape Winelands Education, that's Jason, he moved something. So it's wonderful to be able to keep track of all these, uh, all these things that happen in your folder. But if I want to unshare something, now there is not an unshare button. You just have to use the share button again. So you right click on the folder that you've shared that you now want to unshare. You click on share again. And then I just alter this. So anyone with link, I'm going to change this to restricted. And now no one can add anything to that anymore. I don't know if you've noticed. But there was a little, like a little guy there, a little person, when the folder was still shared with everyone, like this one. And that will show you that it has been shared with either a single person or multiple people or that the link is open to anyone. And now that I've removed that right, the little person disappeared. Okay. Now I want to ask you actually if you can try and share a link of any file in your Google Drive in the chat. So choose something that is not sensitive at all, that doesn't contain sensitive information. I'm going to use this one. So no, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use this one. So to recap, you're going to right click. And then say share. And I just want the link. I'm not going to share this with a specific person. I just want the link. I want to open it to the public. So I'm going to click on that option there. Scroll down to anyone with link. And I just want everyone to be able to view it. I don't want you to be able to change anything within that Google Slides presentation. So copy link, done. I'm going to go to the chat option and then paste it. I want to ask, I want to say everyone, but I feel like I'm talking to students, which you're not your colleagues, but I just want to encourage you to try that, try and find the share link, and then just paste it in the chat. You're not going to spam anyone. We're not going to use it for anything. But just try and find that share link and put it in the chat. Share it in the chat. I'm just going to give everyone a minute or two to do that. There we go. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Anita. Melanie, fantastic. I'm not even going to click on any of these links. I just want you to be able to do it. And those links, when you say copy link, you can now insert it into a, a document if you want to. You can use it for emails, which we will get to a bit later. Um, it's maybe not as elegant as the option that we're going to explore. You can use it for social media if you want to post something on. Uh, WhatsApp, like I have a lot of my students on WhatsApp groups and I need them to complete like Google Form or a Word doc or something. Fantastic, Vivian, well done. Um, 
And then I just copy that link and paste it into the WhatsApp chat. You can obviously also shorten the link because these links are actually quite clumsy. Um, sure, you've heard of Bitly. So if you want to use Bitly, Moi Marika, fantastic. Um, you can use Bitly to just make the link more elegant. So our attendance register, register is a Bitly link. So that is just a lot more elegant than that link, all of these ones. Fantastic, Cristel. Well done. There we go. Hopefully, I can say easy peasy and move on. <laughs> Any questions at this point? There are no questions in the chat, Anita. That's a pardon, um, Andrea. That's all right. No, my net with you. Okay. So let's move on. Nice. Thank you, Yaku. Okay, so you can also obviously share uh, PDFs and videos, but I'm, I'm making an example of this because if you go to a normal, um, let's just, I'm just going to open something, let's do flashcards, I actually don't know what this is. Okay, so we open this. If I go to the URL bar on top here and I copy that link, that link will also take you to this presentation. But if I open a PDF like this, it's not going to open in G Suite itself or in Google itself, this is a different viewer. So if I copy this URL up here, it's going to still take you to the drive. It's not going to take you to the PDF. And the same with videos. So if I want to share a link to this specific document, I will have to go and right click on it. And then I will get the share option or the get link option. So just remember that because if I do this, if I look at the PDF and then copy that, that URL is going to take you to the drive and you won't have access to it because my drive is protected. So if I want to share the PDF or even a, a video, we go a video. I'm not going to share this because this is a video of my university production. <laughs> you have to right click and then say either share or get link. Wonderful. I think we're a bit ahead of schedule. So I'm just going to ask again if I'm not going too fast. I hope everyone is still lacquer with me. And then we're going to move on. So now we're going to go to navigate to the left side of your screen to shared with me. Now, this happens when files have been shared with me by colleagues through either Google Drive or even via email. And it all gets thrown into this folder, shared with me. Now, this is a bit chaotic. I try to keep my drive as organized as possible, but I have not gotten to this in quite a while. And I can now, if I want to create some order in my life and get rid of the chaos, I can now put these documents into folders that make sense. Now we'll get to best practice in a little bit, but just before we get there, how do I, I want to say move, but you're not going to move anything because it's, if you move something, it's going to move for the owner as well, because none of these uh, files belong to me. As you see, they're shared by Eileen and Elaine and Stella and Gus, they all belong to different people. But I now want Booker and Schrijfbehoef de Lijs to appear in my admin folder. Okay. So I'm going to right click on it. And it gives me an option to add a shortcut to my drive. Now it used to be add to drive, but Google has now changed it to add shortcut, which is actually quite convenient because then you remember you didn't create it. It's actually someone else's file that they created. So I'm going to do this, add shortcut to drive. 
and I want to organize it immediately because if I now just say add shortcut, it's going to go to my root folder and my drive. And if I just keep on doing that, there will be complete chaos. So not doing that, going to click on that little arrow there, go to admin, click on that, and add shortcut. Let me just show you where it is now. I'm going to go to my drive. <coughs> Excuse me. Admin. And there we go. Booker and Skrifbuch de Lace is now a shortcut. It has a tiny little arrow to show you that it is a shortcut and that the complete file has not actually been moved to my drive. So as an exercise, go to your own shared with me folder. I'm sure you will have a bunch of stuff in there. And just try and create some shortcuts to different folders from there. I'm going to give you a minute or two just to explore that. Let me just recap it. So a student of mine, Nicola, has sent me a text. It's for a practical exam, so now I want to create a shortcut. So right click and then add shortcut to drive. I'm going to my drive, Academy, and I'm going to grade 10. And I will just create a new folder for this because I haven't started organizing it. Now this is the first one that I'm putting there. So down here at the bottom, you have an option to go new folder, click on it. And I just say, add shortcut. Again, let me just show you where it is now. It's in my drive. Academy. Gratin. Ooh, and I misspelled that horribly. Let me just rename it. You can rename any of your folders or files at any time, especially if your fingers are as clumsy as mine. Extra. Extra. There we go. Right. And there we go. That is the shortcut. So I will give you a minute or two just to explore. Go to share with me. And I just want to figure out the rest of my notes here. How's the chat looking, Jason? Anything that I need to look at? Uh, no questions so far, Indra. Wonderful. OK. It feels like I'm going very fast. Or oh, Yaka just gave me way too much time to do this. Maybe I should just speak slower. <laughs> the other thing you can use shortcuts for is if you go back, let's say to my drive, you can add shortcuts to your own files. So if I want to have the same file in different folders because it's applicable to grade 11 and 12 and grade 10, so it's theory that I do with all three grades, I can just create a shortcut and add it to all of those folders instead of going and just making a copy of the exact same file and putting it into those three folders. So as an example, I'm going to go to Academia again. Now this is applicable to grade 11 and to grade 12. So now I want to create a shortcut, add shortcut to drive, and I'm going to go to Academy again. I'm going to add it to grade 12, add shortcut, and I want to put it in the grade 11 folder as well. So right click, add shortcut to drive, my drive, Academy, and I'm going to put it in the grade 11 folder. There we go. So this thing, this original file still stays there. The folder, in fact, still stays there. But now when I go to grade 11, that shortcut 
will be there waiting for me. So I don't have to copy and paste the whole folder, which just streamlines everything a little bit more. While we're right-clicking so many times now, I want to show you another option. So let's say I want to use this, my wish list. And I know ESCOM is going to flick that switch, and I won't have any internet, but I want to work on this. You can right-click. And where does it say? Where's that option? Oh, goodness. It should give me an option to work offline. Yaku, any ideas? I don't know if you're still there. Doesn't seem like it. I've just built up something now that I can't deliver on. But it should have given me an option to work offline. Anyway, so let's move on. It's not going to change your, your life, so it's okay. Okay. Hopefully you've played around now and you've tried to sort of figure out how the shortcuts work and just try and organize your drive. What we're moving on to next is called best practice. Now, best practice does not imply the only practice. It just means it's going to give you some guidelines as to how to organize your drive. <coughs> Excuse me. Just like on a machine, so this is my normal desktop. I would like to keep my desktop tidy and neat and not have a bunch of icons lying around because, where is that presentation? <laughs> we have all seen desktops that look like this. We know this person. We work with this person. And it is just not cool. If your desktop looks like this, I don't even want to know what your brain looks like. And the same goes for Google Drive. And because you get so many shared files via Google Drive and email, it can become this quite easily. So stay organized, keep it neat and tidy. I've tried to do this. So I've created my folders. And there is no wrong or right necessarily. It, do whatever floats your boat. So now I still have to organize all of these little guys actually as well and just put them into folders in order to navigate to them even more efficiently. It's really personal preference. I know I need to reorganize academia because it's become a bit chaotic in there. It's too many things. So with the teachers with us today, it's maybe a good idea to just have your grades grouped together. And then within the grades folder, what I try to do is I create years. Because I know in 2018, I did this assignment. 2019, I did that. And then I, I also put my students' work into those years. And what I enjoy, you can see my folders have different colors. And you can change that color by... Um, just having your just hover your mouse over the folder, right click, and then change color. And you can change it to anything. Again, nothing is right or wrong, but I respond to color. So I like having my things color coded so all my senior grades are the same. Um, I don't teach English anymore, so that is a different purple or color that I don't really like. It really is personal preference. Don't be afraid of subfolders. So now you've created a folder titled Grad 12. Create your subfolders within that. So maybe something for notes, maybe something for old exam papers. Again, these I need to organize. I've been a bit lazy here, and I need to organize these. But now how do you move these files into different folders? And if you really, if you sit yourself down in front of your computer and you decide today is the day I'm going to organize my stuff, you will see it takes some time, but when it's done, it is, it feels very good. Now, how do you move it? So you can either drag and drop it. So let's take, um, I'm going to take the planning. 
So I click on it, and as you see, it will move. So then I can move it to another folder. I'm not going to do that now, but it will go into the folder that you want to move it to. You can use multiple files like this, and you can move all three into a different folder. And if that doesn't work for you, you can try something else as well. You can right click on the file and you can say move to. Now I can move it to any of these subfolders. So I want to say 2020 and I go into that subfolder and this one has even more subfolders and you can put it there. I'm not going to say move here because I'm going to forget to move it back. So just to recap, you can either drag and drop it, or you can right click and then say move to. You can also move folders. So if you click on a folder, that can also move. So remember here as well, if I have now decided to share 2018 with colleagues of mine, if I move something into that folder, if I move files into that folder, those files will also be shared with the people who have sharing rights to that specific folder. So that's why it's important to remember that the children files of the parent will inherit the parent's sharing rights. So just keep track of that. That also that's that's also why you need to keep your stuff organized and just uh, not as chaotic as that desktop that I showed you. Another thing that I've never actually used, but I think I should, is this option here. So if you navigate to the left side of your screen, it says starred. I'm going to click on it. And I start these two folders for today's training session just to show you what it looks like. So this is the folder that I've been navigating to the whole time. There's the Google Fundamentals Module 2 and everything else. That's the folder that I uploaded earlier. So just to show you how to start something, we'll go to My Drive. And as you see, there's the starred folder and there's another start folder but now I want to work with Tunil as well because I'm um, maybe I've started with the play that I've directed or I'm, I'm directing and I need to be able to access that folder quickly and not go to my drive and search for it the whole time so I right click again and just say add to start And then I will find it right there with the start folders. Now, don't, <laughs> don't completely lose your mind with the start folders. It doesn't help if you go to my drive and you just star everything because then it's going to look exactly the same. So maybe just use that as an option for something that you work on quite frequently. So I know I work in academia the most. That's the folder that I put most of my stuff into. And that stays start. But now, let's see, it's October month and I'm done with the play. I don't need to speak to the parents anymore. I don't need to do any admin for it anymore. I will just remove the star. So right click and remove from start. Boom. And then it's gone. Then it's not there anymore. You can also add individual files, not just a folder. So I can go copy of November examen tussig. I need to know when I'm invigilating. So copy, ach, not copy, right click and say add to start. And it's going to be waiting for me right there. The other option, and here's where you use the, your, your skills that you learned in module one, is to create a bookmark. So I'm going to open this. There you go. That's the whole schedule. And I'm just going to create a bookmark up there. I'm not going to show you how to do that again because we have covered it. And then the bookmark will appear up there. <coughs> Excuse me.
Right. So with our training, I've actually, it's, it's always fun to learn something new. I've never explored this option, priority. I've, in fact, never heard of it. I've heard people mentioning workspace, and it's like, nah, okay, it's probably an area inside your office or something. But if you click on priority, it is exactly that. It means this is the stuff that you're working on. You can create a workspace, which means this option here will give you access to a whole bunch of files that you are working on, let's say, for a specific project. So I'm going to use the example of my grade 12's practical exam. Now, let's say the practical exam is coming, it's around the corner, and I have multiple files to work on, and I don't want to ne necessarily navigate to all of those individual files and folders every time I want to access them. So I'm going to create a workspace. Click on that, and I'm going to say, Graag 12, Praktische Examen. Again, apologies for the English people. It's not important what I'm writing. And then create. So it's saying I have no files yet. Now I want to add stuff because I'm going to work on these files quite often. So add files. It opens this, this navigation bar to the right. And I'm going to go to my drive because I know in Academy I will find my grade 12 uh, files and folders that I need to work on. So I know that they're going to have to... Um, Let's say we need to do some planning. So I'm going to say insert. I want to add more files to this workspace. So I'm saying add files. It's opening this box again on the side. Going to my drive. Academy. And then Grad 12. And I'm going to 2020 because I want to have access to let's say paperwork summary. As you can see, these are shortcuts that I've added from another folder because someone else owns them. And I can select multiple files at the same time and then insert them. And when you're done, you can say done. At any point, you can add more files to these or you can remove them. Now, <laughs> this is actually quite cute. The first time I heard this. So we have the Google waffle up there. And these are called the meatballs. I don't know why everything is food with Google, but I have no complaints. So you can click on the meatballs and you can rename this. You can hide this workspace or you can remove this workspace. So let's say I am now done with the grade 12 exams and I can hide it. Bye bye. I'm not seeing it anymore. It's still there. So I haven't removed it. I just don't want to see it every day because it causes me stress, etc., etc. So I really actually like this option, and I think I will definitely start using this in the near future. So again, I want to give you a few minutes just to try and create a workspace for yourself, because the idea is, like I've said before, that you become interactive and that you try these things out. So I'm just going to be quiet for a minute or two, and you try and figure out how this workspace works. To recap, you go to priority here on the left-hand navigation bar. And you say, create workspace. And you title it, and then you put a few files in there, just to see how it works. If you don't like it, you can just delete it again later. While we get the people to do that, uh, Jason, anything on the chat? No, Indra. Still Nothing. no questions in the chat. Oh, goodness. OK, so either I'm, I'm, I'm explaining quite well, or I've put people to sleep. No, I think that you are explaining quite well. OK. <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. While you do that, I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to say, no. add some files. Go to my drive. There I have a folder for Tenille. 
And this is the production we did last year. It's called Donkey Fowl. And I have a whole bunch of things in here. Now let's just say I want to access four of them. But I also want some files from the production we did the previous year. Indra, mm. um, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, is this option only available on the G Suite or does the individual Gmail accounts, if you can call it that, also has this uh, I actually option? don't know. That's a very good question. Because well, I, I wonder if I should just Google it. Yes, I went into my normal um, Google account and I don't see that priority option at the top. Oh. So maybe I think it's only available on the G Suite. I will I will check it out because I've started um, my school's G Suite account. So okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. I actually didn't know that. Yes, and there's also Liz mm. in the chat also said, uh, "Can we find the recording to watch again? My network will turn off soon due to bad weather." Yes, oh. and, um, I think yes, it will be available. Yes. Uh, uh, Vavin also said, um, I also don't have the priority option because I, I think it's that is the um, G Suite option. I think if you can explain that to the to the participants, they will understand it. Yeah, that would make sense if it's G Suite just because it's, it's work orientated. Um, but again, everyone, um, I would really encourage every school, can I sound like a salesperson now? I'm not making any money out of saying this, but I would really encourage every school to actually try and get onto the G Suite just because it's for free. It's so user friendly. If you make a mistake, you can just reverse it. It's not like your computer is going to explode or you're going to lose your files. It's so user friendly. Um, you use so much space anyway, and you want to back up your stuff because again, you can just lose your computer or you know, a horrible thing, something can happen to it at school, and then you lose all of that work that you've done. So try and speak to the the, the powers that be at your school institute and try and get them to to buy into this G Suite idea. And the e-advisors would be more than willing to help you guys set it up. We were very lucky at Stunnebosch High that uh, I think it was about two years ago, we got a training from a company specifically for Google showing us all of these drive options and shared drives and Google Docs and then COVID hit and we were ready to rock and roll because we've already populated our drives with digital resources. We know what we knew what was going on in classrooms. So it was easy to make the transition into teaching online. And I know that's not a case with a lot of schools, but now that I think a lot of us have tried and tested it, um, I haven't actually heard of a lot of complaints because it's so user-friendly, because the, the space is so vast and the options are so vast and Google keeps on rolling out new options and improvements. Uh, it's actually quite exciting to follow the whole setup. And if you look, at the amount of apps that go with it, um, yeah, it's just a whole bunch of fun. Okay, so let's move on. I really am ahead of schedule, so all of you can start your dinner plans earlier, definitely. <laughs> we are almost done. We're going to the last bit, which is Drive and Gmail. So if you're here, you have a Gmail account, be it either a personal account, or a, a domain like a school domain account, you have a Gmail account. So I've opened up another, where is my email? This is not my school email. I'm also in charge of the alumni at the school. Uh, so I'm using that email address and I have now emailed something to this address from my work address. So there, I've emailed it to myself, how to add items to drive from Google. So Gmail and Google Drive work so well as a unit. 
as you've seen with the sharing options, it gives you uh, an option to send a message to a person's email to notify them that you've shared something in Google Drive. But if you want to email something, it's just as easy. So I'm going to open this very exciting email that I sent to myself, and it has two attachments. The one is a PDF, and this one gives me an option to download or to just add it to my drive. And this one, the Google Doc, just gives me, it just gives me an option to add to my drive. So I'm going to, I'm going to add it to my drive, the Google Doc. So you just click on it and remember, just organize it from the get go. Don't just add it to your root folder because it's going to become flattered and it's going to become chaotic very quickly. Mm. So I'm going to say my drive and I've created some sample folders and I'm going to put it in example folder A. There we go. And there's the shortcut. Done. And as you will see, the icon changed from the little triangle thing to now showing me it's actually in a folder in my drive. So if I go to the waffle in this email account and I go to drive, I'm going to see it in example folder A. Boom. There it is. And that's easy. It's a shortcut. It's right there. And now, let's say I want to use this as well. Yes, I can download it, but then it's going to be on my machine, and I want it in Google Drive. So I'm going to click the Add to Drive again, that triangle thing. And now it said Add it to my drive, but it's just going to be in the root folder. So I want to organize it immediately. Organize. So I want to move it to example folder A again and just say move here. Or I can create another folder if I want to. But I'm just going to say move here. And if I go to the waffle, go to drive, example folder A, there we go. There it is. So it's very easy to keep your emails, again, keep your email inbox organized as well. So now, because these two files have actually been added to my drive, I can just delete the email. And then it's gone, because I now have the files. So my school email looks quite different to this one. Um, it has a few unread emails. I tried to just simplify it for the, the purpose of this exercise. But try and keep your inbox as organized as your drive. It'll just help to, I talk about brain space, just clear your mind and just help you to navigate your work and life in an easier way. So let's just see if we compose an email now. Let's say I'm going to send it to Yaku again. He's not on this one. I'm going to send it to my work email. Here we go. Put in an example. And now I want to add some files. So I can either use attached files, but that's from your machine. I want to use something from Google Drive. So insert files using Drive. Click on it, it'll open to my drive, and I'm going to go to example folder B. Now here I've created an example Google Slides presentation and an example Google Doc. So I just select them, and I can say drive link, insert. And there they are. So if I send this now, I will receive those two documents and I can just add them to my drive, my personal drive, at my personal drive, my school drive. Okay. What I want you to try and do now is create an email. So open up your email. So create, uh, open a new tab.
control T or command T on a Mac, where you can just press this button here, the plus, go to your Gmail, You'll see my, my school email now. It's quite different to the other one. We can say compose. No, compose. It's a bit slow. And I want you to attach some files to an email. And now, Jason, can I ask you to copy and paste that email address from the, the trainer? Yes, you and uh, that. Fantastic. I did share it with the participants. Fantastic. So there's an email address in the chat, and you can use that email address to now just send a random email with a random file, just nothing too sensitive, please. And you can send that um, to the the CWED presenter at wced.info, just as an exercise. He's not going to check up on it. I just want you to play around and get the feel of it. Is everyone doing okay? Have you tried it? Do you run into any issues? Okay. Indra will inform yes. you as soon as there's been one or two mails. Fantastic, okay. Okay, so that basically, yeah, I know I finished quite early. Um, but I feel like I've covered everything in detail. I think so. But I want to open up the chat and ask you if there's anything that is unclear. Is there something that you would like me to recap again? Are you clear on the sharing options, the editing rights, the viewer rights, the commenter rights? Anything that you'd like me to recap? <laughs> 